Hey y'all, Amy here. Today I wanted to go over a little technique on how to properly rack a slide. Oftentimes as a firearms instructor, I hear these words, I can't rack the slide. It's too hard for me. Or more so, I get a lot of husbands, dads, brothers, uncles that call me and say, I need my special lady in my life to work with you because she can't work the slide. We're gonna have to get her a different gun. Well, those are some of my favorite things to hear because I know with a little bit of technique, we can correct that. And then not only does it build confidence, but it also allows you the ability to pick out a firearm that works better for you without needing anybody's help. So if you've ever been frustrated about not being able to work a slide or have gotten that notorious slide bite, rookie move, it happens to the best of us. I'm here to help, so let's do this. Before we get started though, I'd like to show that my pistol is in the cleared position and it is free of and cleared of any live ammunition. However, jumping into those rules of firearm safety, we are always gonna treat every single firearm as if it is always loaded, no matter what. Second rule of firearm safety, keep that finger off the trigger until you're on target and ready to shoot. I like to train that this trigger finger stays nice and high on the frame of that pistol. Third rule of firearm safety, never point your muzzle at anything you do not wish to destroy. Fourth rule of firearm safety, always know your target and what is beyond it. Now for the sake of dry firing at home, it's just the same as when you're out of the range, you treat it exactly the same. So I have chosen a designated spot on my wall to the left as my target. I am facing the other direction though for the sake of teaching how to rack it. So, and I'll go over that in just a minute. And my trigger finger is always gonna live right here. Okay, so let's jump into it. I'm gonna go ahead and close my slide and we'll go over the tips and tricks. So the biggest technique in racking a slide is the push factor. Now, if you notice, like I said, I am facing a different direction. It's because pushing cross body rather than forward is a little bit easier because it gives you more momentum and strength to push this way. And it's also just more comfortable. So we're gonna give a push and a pull. Now it's most important to feel the stop with the push and then the pull back with the left hand. So we're gonna go over a little slower how to do that. So you're gonna take the meaty part of your palm here and the pads of your fingers, not the nail, the pads. You're gonna place it firmly over the back of your slide. Now I will say my hand is covering the chamber a little bit back here. That's okay. As long as we remember that pull back motion, we can avoid that slide bite. Okay, so remember, we're gonna bring that firearm nice and close into our body while maintaining muzzle control and trigger discipline. We're gonna give that right hand or left for you lefties, that right hand a good push, a good hard push. You're gonna hang on to it firmly with your left hand. Once you feel that stop, you're gonna continue pulling back and releasing with your left. So nice and slow, pull it back to that stop, release it back with your left. Now, doing it a little bit faster to kind of get used to that technique, just pull it back. Now you see I'm letting go of it and it's a little bit more dramatically letting go than what you would typically do. I just wanna make sure that we understand to bring that left hand back so that you're not catching it here in the chamber. The slide doesn't need any help going forward, just help going back. So don't ever feel like you gotta follow that left hand forward. Make sure it ends up right back in here. And once you get used to it and you start doing it more and more, it won't have to be as rigid. You'll just kinda get in there and go a little bit faster. But for the sake of learning, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So bring it nice and tight into your body. You're gonna give it a good solid push and follow through with that left hand. Once you feel that stop, you release it a little bit faster. And then once you really get going, you're just gonna rack it nice and firmly. Now you need to get that stop all the way back. That's very important. You should be able to hear the difference between barely pulling that, not fully successfully racking it to that good firm racking. The reason you wanna make sure you hear that stop is so that round can properly and successfully chamber in there, right in that chamber there. <laughs> that sounded weird, but hey y'all, I don't talk a lot on video, so bear with me. You wanna make sure that it's fully chambered in there because if you're doing just little weak little racks there, you're gonna malfunction. You're gonna risk malfunctioning, you're gonna risk jamming. So 
really make sure that you're giving it that oomph, that push. If you ever feel like you're muscling that slide, let it go, pull it back. Remember that push. Ready? Tips of your fingers, meaty palm, meaty part of your palm, and give it a good hard push, nice and firm. Super important part of dry firing is just following through with those rules of firearm safety. Always make sure that trigger finger is nice and high and that you're keeping that muzzle control. A huge tool that I use and recommend during dry fire is filming yourself. That way you can watch and make sure that you are practicing trigger discipline and muzzle control. Oftentimes we get excited that we feel like we've done it correctly, but if you're not following those rules of firearm safety, it's a fail. So filming yourself and referring back is a huge technique. I love dry fire at home, but it has to be done safely. So for the sake of racking that side and hearing how good that sounds, I fully get it. All right, if y'all have any other questions, you wanna see any other kind of videos on how to, holler at me in those comments down below. And thanks for watching y'all, I hope this helps.